Tom Reinhardt, Deputy Director for Architecture here at Mount Vernon. And we are in the Nelly Custis bedroom, which is our current bedroom restoration. This room was created in its square shape in the 1758 raising of the roof that George Washington uh, does to the house. But the year before, he's ordering wallpaper for four bedrooms which have an eight foot height ceiling. That This is one of those spaces. And we know that it, he's ordering before the 1758 work because the size of the room changes a little bit and we're able to see that this is a smaller, earlier version of this room. We also found small fragments of original plaster, which probably dates to 1758 when the wall was, was worked on, and we found on top of that, the surface of that plaster, some very small fragments, maybe a fragment about this big, size of a quarter or so, uh, of blue chintz wallpaper. And that was very exciting uh, for all of us here, especially our curatorial department. Well, we've known from the Washington documents that there would have been wallpaper in the Nellie Custis Lewis room and in all the second floor bedchambers during the Washington's lifetime. But it wasn't until earlier this year that we actually had hard evidence of what that wallpaper looked like. Uh, we found a number of fragments, and you're seeing here on the screen a close-up of one of the fragments that we found in a corner of the room. Uh, and we know from the position where it was found based on where the plaster and the, the paint lines were, that it was from that earliest period, circa 1757 to 1758. Uh, the paper itself is exciting. You can see two layers here. You've got a white background and then a blue wash on top of that. And we know from analysis that the blue is a blue vertiter that is a copper-based pigment. And it was one of the more difficult pigments to render in the 18th century. And then what you're seeing are printed black outlines on top of that. And when you look at it, uh, the overall, you can start to trace the outlines of leaves or flower petals on it. So this paper is one of two of the earliest fragments that we have here at Mount Vernon. What does that tell us uh, for the Nellie Custis Lewis room? Well, as we look forward to the restoration of that space, this gives us a strong sense of its distinctive character within Mount Vernon. And so we're going to be keeping that in mind as we go forward with the restoration and try to recreate, uh, recover that ambiance. We're looking today at a selection of wallpaper fragments that have been found in the mansion over the course of the time that the Mount Vernon Ladies Association has owned the mansion. And so we've got a piece of a border here that was found in the new room, the largest room at Mount Vernon. We've got a fragment that was taken off of the central passage, uh, the main hallway at Mount Vernon. And you can see from the dates and inscriptions here that this was taken off in an early attempt to try to recreate and re restore this wallpaper. And then we've got two pieces. Uh, one is a border, one is the main uh, wallpaper that were found in the Washington bedchamber. And what we're seeing in all of these is really the introduction of the neoclassical style to Mount Vernon, coming in in the 1780s and the 1790s uh, when Washington is really uh, trying to update uh, the house. We've got a couple of different iterations of that. So this border that's that's from the new room, you're seeing a very formal, a very architectural uh, version of the neoclassical. These is imitating the type of carved ornament you might see around a room or that you might see, say, on a frame. So you've got a little bit of a indication of a leaf here and then a very formal beading pattern. Then over here in this central passage design, or at least what we can see of it, uh, you've got this elaborate acanthus leaf scroll. There's a suggestion of a, a shell here and some flowers. And when we compare this to known patterns, uh, this matches up very well with the arabesque style that's being produced at the time. And what they're doing is they're looking at the frescoes, the Roman frescoes coming out of Pompeii uh, and Herculaneum. They're seeing these very fanciful designs on them and, and trying to recreate them here. So this went would have gone in the central passage. It has sort of a yellowish background. And these would have 
pigments would have actually been a, a brighter blue and green as well as shades of gray there. Then some of the most interesting papers uh, and the most puzzling are these that are coming out of the Washington bedchamber. You see on this border, it would have been a wide border that would have gone at the top of the room. You've got a partial swag with a little uh, tail hanging down here and then some, some roping of, of flowers and leaves. And it's in these bright colors of shades of orange and black. Uh, very bold, but again, they are looking back to Pompeii, and these are considered uh, Pompeian palette, so not, not necessarily unusual for the very late 18th century. Then this fragment here, we're actually looking at the back of a piece of paper, and on the, the other side of it, there's a later 19th century design, but here is what was pulled off the wall um, when the wet glue stuck to the earlier pattern. And it's hard to see here, but when we put it under multispectral light, this is what we began to see. And you can see it's the suggestion of a classical vase, brimful with flowers and leaves, with some little um, sprigs of wheat maybe down there at the bottom. That again is very typical of these arabesque style designs that they are producing an imitation of the Roman ones. Again, it looks like that is probably done in a very simple palette of just shades of orange. It's very bright and very vivid in that space. Well, we are in the midst of a study with, with all of these to um, identify the pigments, the fibers of the paper, and then try to identify you know, where they're being produced and who was doing them and when Washington would have installed them in the mansion. And we're using multispectral imaging to look at these papers to try to bring up more of the pattern than what we can see with the visible eye. Uh, we're doing pigment analysis on the different shades, uh, fiber analysis on the papers themselves, and then traditional research into the patterns, um, looking across England and France and America to see where these may have come from. And we hope um, that these will guide our efforts to restore these spaces in the mansion, Central Passage and the Washington Bedchamber. Already, uh, we were able to identify the full pattern for this border, and that's what you see uh, when you go into the new room today, is that, that restored version. So we hope to be bringing a much brighter, more vibrant mansion to life in the near future.